in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. Bill is visiting here in Stockholm, so we've actually done a one-on-one interview. I know that most of the interviews I do on the podcast are via Skype, but you actually have us face-to-face, and we were uh, face-to-face much earlier, taking the bus, showing him around downtown Stockholm, and now we're here at the Bandit Studios. They've been very nice enough to uh, thank you, Peter, for loaning it out at the studio, and we're here to talk about Phil X and all things Phil X. Wow. How about that? <laughs> I'm ready. Are you? Yeah. Well, you're Canadian. You're always ready. Wow. See, I, I do my research, or my research team does their research and then gives it to me. I know, but what does Canadian have specifically to do with ready? Well, I think the Canadians are always ready. They're always ready for, I guess, anything that, like, quick movements from the States. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. And there's a lot of quick movements these days happening. But Excuse you me. do now live in, uh, you were telling me, Las Vegas. Yeah, but and not for long. That's okay. But you are sort of a United States I'm a transplant. transplant. Yeah, I, uh, I grew up in Toronto, Canada, and uh, moved to L.A. in 97 with a dream. Yeah, dream of being a guitar player. It seems to have worked out. I think it worked out all right. It has. I mean, just going over quickly some of the bands you've been associated with, I think most people nowadays, and this is what you're out here in Stockholm playing, uh, you're playing guitar for John Bon Jovi. Yeah. And, but you've also been associated with many different bands. There's some, I, I look at some Canadians in there. Yeah. Some and Canadians some n- there. Northwest. I, I, you know, probably the most popular of the Canadians uh, would be Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Play guitar for her. Well, I mean, uh, I recorded on a record for her. I guess I was a studio guy in LA. And, and the way the snowball rolls um, is you start on one project and then it's another project and then it's Avril Lavigne. Yeah. So, you know, and in another studio, it, was, uh, it started with uh, Tommy Lee, Methods of Mayhem in 99, and then it was Rob Zombie, and then Alice Cooper, the Brutal Planet thing. Yeah, I, I, I always say this to people that I think whatever gig you're at, as long as you're cool about it, yeah. it'll lead you to your next gig. People associated with that project will more than likely help you with the next project. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's the producer, you know. I mean, it's I always put it like this like the whole Tommy Lee thing happened was I was actually painting the producer's garage Scott Humphrey uh-huh. and and I always put it like well they needed a guitar player and Scott knew I played so he said let's get Phil in here we'll, you know play some guitar brush or roll on what were you doing well <laughs> what brush, kind of brush for the corners <laughs> okay and Got roll it. on for the walls and <laughs> now um, masking did you do the masking as well I didn't do a lot of masking oh, okay all right um but the the uh the obvious uh, situation is delivery. If someone says, hey, can you come in and play guitar on this? You have to deliver. Yeah. Like if, you know, because I played one, one song and Tommy was like, dude, you got to play on the whole record. And I'm like, great, awesome. But if I would have walked in and not delivered, yeah. then I would have been back to painting. And Being they prepared. They'd be still looking for somebody. Yeah. I've mm. actually learned your guitar parts over the years. I'll get into that a little <laughs> bit later, but I okay. I mean, I wish we had some guitars here right now in the studio. I mean, all we have is a cigar box three string, but maybe you can even show me with that. But I've been learning your guitar solo for the Alice Cooper fans out there that are listening. Brutal Planet, that guitar solo is actually a Phil X guitar solo, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. And I've been playing it wrong for many, many years. <laughs> And many, many DVDs. <laughs> but I didn't realize you guys split it, right? You take the first half and Nita takes the second half. We do in this new version of it the last time we right. played it. You're right. Yeah. But well, maybe, she, maybe at she one point. She doesn't do it right either. <laughs> well, okay, good. Well, two wrongs make it still wrong, I guess. <laughs> but I also saw on your list of, I mean, God, the names are great. I mean, the Chris Cornell. Oh, dude, that was amazing. Great experience. I, I'm, I, hate, <clears throat> I hate being the guy that... Uh, you know, hey, we're all in the studio. Hey, can we get a photo? I hate that, but I really regret not getting a pic with Cornell. Yeah. Because we, we only did one song together, and it was like he, he did an entire record with Timbaland. And the record company was like, um, you're a rock singer. We should do a rock version of the single. And so they went to Howard Benson to produce, and I, at the time I was his guitar player. Right. Um, anytime, anytime he needed one. And he said, hey, we're doing a Chris Cornell song in. I'm like, are you kidding? So, I'm like Donkey Kong. Yeah, and then yeah. I was there, and then um, and then Chris came in, and we we got to hang a bit, and, and 
And then the next time, it was funny, the next time I saw him, I came in and he was there talking about uh, either doing another project or something. I'm going, hey, how's it going? He goes, hey, we just mixed a song. I made sure they turned up the guitar solo. And I'm just thinking, oh, thank you, Chris. I, excuse me, my language. I, my, I just heard that from Chris Cornell. This is a podcast. You can do whatever you want. All right. It was awesome to hear that from Chris Cornell. That is cool. Yeah. He he was very understated, quiet, but super cool. Yes. The, 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 the one time that I was able to meet him, I was in a band up in Seattle called Sweetwater and managed by the same, uh, It was he was married to the manager at the time. Okay. And um, <clears throat> we were um, at a record release party and he right. came up and he said, Good job, but those two words to me, "good job" coming from Chris Cornell was yeah. It's always the source, right? It's golden, right? Yeah. You know, you're in a club and you're playing your ass off, and then when a, you know a drunk guy walks up and goes, "Yeah, you're pretty good," it's not the <laughs> same thing as if one of your heroes walks up and goes, "Wow, that was that was awesome." We were just talking about that. One of your heroes uh, being guitarist Uli Roth. Yes. And he and you just recently met your guitarist hero, and what did he say to you when you know you guys met? Well, it's. Um, well, the funny thing is, is you meet in a, in a, in, like, he doesn't know who you are. And right. you, and you're like, oh my God, it's Uli. You know, and it's guy we were I've been in listening Germany to in my whole life. Yeah. The, you know, everybody got something from this guy. Even Eddie Van Halen. I, you know, I can point out a lick at the end of the Ice Cream Man solo that he got from Sales of Chiron. You know, that kind of thing. Right. So, because I totally geek out. I love Eddie and I love Uli and I love, you know, there's so many players that we grew up on. But, um, when, when you know it was by chance that Uli heard me play, and and then um, Pete Thorne was at the same event in Mannheim um, Guitar Summit, and he wanted to play Immigrant Song, and the bass player was going to sing it, and um, but he he had lost his voice, so I'm like, okay, Pete, I'll, I'll sing it, Immigrant Song. So to a full theater. I'm holding my phone, reading the lyrics, and singing Immigrant Song. But you know it. It's, it's sort of in your it's backbone. In but you're the, Canadian. But you you're ready. Yes. You're right? Ready. What we said in the beginning. You're ready. So, But it's Uli Roth backstage going, holy shit, this guy can sing. Right. Right? right. So then we hang out for a bit, and we exchange numbers, and I'm right, right, you're going you're gonna to call me. Right. You know? <laughs> but I land. It's funny, because it was a good week. I, land, I left Mannheim, Germany, to fly to uh, the Bahamas to jam with the Gibbons so that wow. was that was a good week that's like but, Spicoli just <laughs> jet on over to London and jam with the stones <laughs> jet on over to Bahamas and jam <laughs> right but in 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 my transition of uh, travel I was at uh, Miami waiting for my luggage and I get a text from Uli Roth saying call me so I, I get back to the hotel and I call him and I say hey what's up he goes hey do you want to I'm playing some shows in Japan in January do you want to be a guest and I'm like, define guest. <laughs> and he's like, well, I want you to get up and sing some, sing and play some Scorpion songs from the 70s. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm in. I'm yeah. totally in. Yeah. And and if it's from that point to January, I'm getting the odd text. Like, I'll be going throughout my day, like, from throwing bananas into a, a shopping cart. And you get a text from Willie Roth and says, how about singing Virgin Killer? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm in. Hey, yeah. You know. For those of you keeping track at home, Uli Roth and David Lee Roth, no relation. Just so you know. Exactly. Right? I don't want anyone scratching their head over there. But I, I heard that that story, it was like basically a two for one when you actually got there too because who else did you meet when you... Rudolf Schecker. There you go. So he came in, he did two of the three shows and Rudy Lenner, who was the drummer before Herman Rarebell, so he played on In Trance and Virgin Killer. So he was there and he played on the, on the same songs that I played. So there was... I actually, if you if you look at my Instagram, which is philx1111, and you scroll down, you will see a picture of the Virgin Killer album cover, and I posted my face on Klaus Main's body. <laughs> really, really bad Photoshop, or was it just? Uh... It was on my phone, so it's crude. <laughs> yeah, okay. But at the same time, not as I'm good like, as your painting skills. I'm like, I'm playing with these guys tonight. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was really excited. That's awesome. Yeah. We we were talking earlier before the camera started rolling about what is your favorite uh, Scorpions album cover, and and I remember just the ones with the forks in yeah. the guy's eyes. That was blackout, right? Yes. And then, but then obviously my favorite one was was like the one with the bubble gum, bubble gum on the boob, boob. Yeah. bubble gum boob, bubble gum boob, forever be known as. So um, love drive, great record. Yeah, it is. That was it the, is. the first record after 
We have Ooh. gone on an Uli Roth Scorpions tangent, but I want I want to sort of steer it a little bit back <laughs> to stuff that you're doing because all that experience, all those bands that you've been jamming with, have basically brought you up to. And it's been longer than I I didn't realize it until the research guys gave me this news. You've been in John Bon Jovi for quite some time. Well, um, the first swing was 2011 yeah 2011 yeah and it was um it was a month it was 13 shows okay and was that was that all that was <clears throat> promised with you no it was like i what was promised was you might come out you might not they were like that doesn't sound like a promise <laughs> that's not, it, it sounds more like a a flip of a coin but it was you a, obviously it, did it kinda, something right it kind of what well the, what happened was um th there was a couple of situations where you know richie <clears throat> had a hard time walking on stage or something happened and john was like i don't want this to be a problem so yeah. i need to have a guy ready to go in the wings so um they found me and asked me to learn a, a two and a half hour show and to be ready yeah. but you might come out you might not i got gotcha. you so uh but 2011 april 14 i got a call from john and he said uh i might need you in may i want to put you on hold but maybe you could come to new york and rehearse a couple of days at the end of april and the day that i flew to new york to rehearse for two days was the day that richie went into rehab Right. So it went from on hold to in, and your first show is the New Orleans Jazz Fest in two days in front of 50,000 people. Okay. No pressure so at all. So thrown into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when I hear stories like that when people's first gig is that monumental. Yeah. I mean, I, the only other story I have, well, I have a couple stories that can compare. That's pretty big. The other one for my time was I played with a guy named Gilby Clark. Yes. And uh, before we had played in a band together, we played in a band called Candy. And then I was living in New York and he calls me on the phone. He goes, hey, Ryan, I'm playing uh, New York tomorrow or I'm actually playing Boston tonight. I'm like, I'd heard nothing. This was before the internet. Right. I go, that's cool. Where are you playing, dude? You know, expecting a club. He goes, I'm playing Boston Garden tonight and Madison Square Garden tomorrow because yeah. I'm in Guns N' Roses. And at that time, it's just like, are you kidding me? So uh, it's 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 funny now to think about it that I didn't know any of that news yeah. until it, it was basically live and almost happening. Yeah. And today, it would have gone out like the news would have been. Oh yeah, totally. Already out before you were even in the band. But that happened to me too a couple of years ago. We were playing in Rock and Rio in 2017, and uh, there's a guy that I did a session with in LA. His name is John Button bass player and he goes hey man i'm in rio want to hang out i'm like sure what are you doing in rio oh i'm playing you know rock and rio i'm like with who the who i'm like <laughs> oh dude i had no idea but that's uh great congratulations Good news. <laughs> yeah <laughs> who again yeah yeah I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. 